Hi everyone. This is Asus H61MC motherboard. Let me show its problem. It turns on for a second and turns off automatically. And then it repeats. You can see it on this LED here. I turn off the system. First I do a volt check on the motherboard. To see voltage status. As you see, switching stage voltages get present for a second. And immediately disappear. As you see, 1.5 volt of RAM power gets present and then disappears. 5 volt and 12 volt were present on this MOSFET. I can check other voltages too they get present for a second and then disappear. Let me show them. Three VSB and five VSB of standby are present here which are fixed. Three volt gets present on pin eight of BIOS IC for a second, then disappears. I can check CPU core voltage on this MOSFET, which is absent. I disconnect CPU power to see if the device turns on fully or not. It might have a problem in CPU, which causes the device to restart. As you see, it didn't make any difference. I can also change CPU before I started to work on motherboard. I change the CPU, and I'm sure the motherboard is the problem. So the first thing I do here is, I remove BIOS IC to see the motherboard status without it. Let's see if BIOS IC has any effect on the function of this device or not. So as you see, the device turns on and off constantly even without BIOS IC. So the BIOS IC can be the problem as well. I program BIOS IC. No matter which programmer you use, you need to get a backup of BIOS IC. Then write the file on your device. I got a backup of BIOS file. Now I select the working BIOS file which I downloaded from dr-bios.com. And click on, write.
Let's go back to the motherboard. I place the BIOS IC in its place. I connect power to CPU. Let's turn on the device and see if programming was helpful or not. Programming BIOS IC caused the device to turn on. Let me check voltage to see if voltages are normal or not. I didn't hear the single short beep, though. 1.5 volt is present here. 1.1 volt is present on its output. A MOSFET generates 1.8 volt in here. It is present as well. 5 VSB and 3 VSB of standby are present for sure. And 1.5 volt of RAM power is also present. CPU doesn't heat. Let me see if CPU core is present or not. CPU core is absent. But 12 volt is present. Which enters CPU power block. I open the board view. This is motherboard board view. There is problem in CPU block. CPU core power is absent. I need to see what the reason is. As you see, there are some MOSFETs, a PWM, and some inductors. The CPU power gets provided by them. PU1 is the PWM IC and PL2, PL3, PL4, and PL6 are different phases of CPU core power. First I check MOSFETs. I set multimeter on diode mode. If there is a short circuit, source to drain voltage would be zero. Meaning, multimeter would show zero. I check it in diode mode on this way. 0 0.4 volt appears. This means that MOSFET is not shorted, nor disconnected. To make sure, I need to check MOSFET outside the board. But for now, by this test, I can somehow tell if MOSFET is OK or not. I check all the MOSFETs one by one. I place a probe on source and a probe on drain. Numbers on multimeter screen on both ways are MOSFET value when it's on the board. If I remove the MOSFET from the board, it should show ohm on one way and not on the other way. I check low MOSFETs as well.
there is a MOSFET here too. I can check that as well, which makes up the fourth phase of this board. I can check all MOSFETs of the board like this and change them if they were shorted. Or place a probe on inductor and check its ohm with GND. That way, the low MOSFET will be tested. And if any of the low MOSFETs is shorted, inductor ohm will be so low. As you see, around 0.449 volt appears. That means, low MOSFETs are okay. For checking high MOSFETs, I can check 12 volt with inductor. Let me plug out the connector. Now I'm checking 12 volt with inductor. I'm checking high MOSFET, and its internal diode is OK. The pin near as GND, I'll connect it and check low MOSFET. Let me try it again. By placing the probe on 12 volt, I check high MOSFET. And by placing the probe on GND, I check low MOSFET. Like this. So the MOSFETs were OK. Now I need to check PWM. Let me turn on the device again. And check if power and enable voltages of PWM IC enter it or not. For making things easier, I connect GND to the body using an alligator clip wire. Now I check board view to check important pins of PU1 IC. The first pin is related to power voltage. Sorry all check enable first to see if V underscore core underscore enable is present on pin 34 or the transistor or not. All check enable. Yes, 1.1 volt is the enable that's for V underscore core. And it enters voltage regulator IC. Next one is VRRDY. Zero point nine volt is present on this capacitor. Next pin is VCC five, that is five volt of the IC, which needs to enter the IC so that it works. That voltage needs to be present on this resistor or the near capacitor, which is absent. It's absent on the capacitor too. 
I'm checking other side of the resistor, and 5 volt is present. But it's absent on this side. The resistor is most probably burned and doesn't let 5 volt pass. Let's see where the 5 volt comes from. It's not this direction. Yes, 5 volt of IC comes from this direction. So this burn 2.2 ohm resistor might be one of the reasons of V underscore core absence. Its resistance is so low and there is a high probability that it burns. Five volt is present on other side but voltage is absent on this side. I'll check the ohm as well. 68 ohm appears on this side. Which means that voltage is not zero on the IC either. I check ohm of the resistor using an SMD tester. I can do it with a normal multimeter as well but I use this one as it's easier. Thirty ohm appears. And as it's a two ohm resistor, thirty ohm indicates that it's burned. As you see, 5 volt doesn't enter the IC. I'll find a 2.2 ohm resistor from a scrap board. Two R2 is written on this resistor. And yes, it's 2.2 ohm and around 2.5 ohm appears on multimeter. I'll take this resistor and replace it with the burned resistor. I apply a bit of flux on SMD components so that I won't miss them or heater won't blow them away while changing them. So that I can change them easily. I need to clean this block. So I'll use thinner to clean the rest of the flux.
and check its ohm again. Yes, 2.3 ohm which means that the resistor is okay now. So I'll connect power to the device and turn it on. And see if the problem got solved or not. I turned it on. I'll check CPU heat. Yes, it's the RAM beep error and that means CPU is most probably detected. And it has reached to RAM step. The step of checking RAM. Let me check CPU underscore core voltage. But first let me check 5 volt and see if it enters PWM or not. Yes, 4.8 volt and CPU underscore core is 1.2 volt which can be checked on drain of low MOSFET. I'll install RAM on the device and see if I can hear single short beep or not. I'll connect a debugger to check the codes. The first time, it got stuck at code 55. Let me turn on the device again. And you heard the single short beep, so it successfully passed the step. CPU is gradually heating up. I'll turn on the device again to be sure it's not turning on randomly. Yes. The device is fine now. And that's it. Thanks for watching Smiley Face.